this video is going to talk about functions. So first we need to define a function. That's why I've called it the worksheet that you have. Function is a set of ordered pair we usually think of x, y. And the first component, like the x, is paired with only one of the second component. So if I had 1, 2, and 1, 3, that couldn't be a function because 1 would go with 2 and 3. It can only go to 1. The domain is all the possible x values of a function. And if we want to do this from a graph, which we will do in a little bit, you can just use the vertical line test. If your vertical line crosses your graph more than one place, that means that the x on that line has more than one y value. And then the range is the possible y values of a function. And this is just determined by any horizontal boundary kind of line. Like if you have a graph that tends toward the x-axis, then it would get close to zero, but ab anything above, we'd have a boundary line there. Now, rem just reviewing interval notation, brackets are used to say that the boundary is included, and parentheses are used so they're not included. Infinities always have parentheses. Always write the smallest value to the largest value. You can have combinations of intervals so you use the union sign which just looks like a capital U. And then uh, down here at the where it shows you the example I would just want to show you that when we're in web work they like to use infinity as I and F so I wrote it that way for you. So you have negative infinity to negative 5 and you have 4 to infinity. That's what all that means. So let's get rid of that and go see if we can determine some things about our graphs here. We want to know if it's a function and then we want to determine the domain and range and then we also want to use function notation and evaluate these two things. So vertical line test here, if I drew a vertical line anywhere, would show me that this is not a function because that y, that x value has two y values that go with it so it's not a function. And then we want to know what the domain is, all the possible x's, how far to the left, how far to the right. And I usually use a capital D like this for meaning domain, and then it's x is an element of what interval? Well, it goes from, it looks like, negative 3 over to positive 3, and it doesn't go any further than that. That circle is no wider than that. But it includes those two points, so we say bracket, smallest value, negative 3 to 3, the greatest value, and it includes 3. And the range is going to be a y as an element of what interval. And it looks like it goes up to 1, 2, 3, 4, and it goes down to 1, 2, negative 3. And it includes, it hits that point, so it goes from negative 3 to 4. Finally, we want to evaluate. So f of 0. This means x is 0. And we want to find y. So if x is 0, we're right here, then we find out that y actually has two different points. It has this point up here, which is 4, and it has this point down here, which looks like negative 3. So we would say that y is 4 and negative 3. It's both those answers. This one, we do a vertical line test. So watch my pen going all over this graph. It only hits it once, so this is a function. Instead of writing the word out, I'll just put f for function. The domain for this one, x is an element of, and then it looks like it's starts here. Notice there's not an arrowhead on that, so that would be negative 4. But then it goes on forever, because this arrow means it's going to keep going up and out. So we would say that it starts at 4, and it's a closed circle, negative 4. So we bracket negative 4, and then it's going to go to infinity, and I think I'll write it as INF. And then the range here, y is an element of, well the lowest point is that point where it started, and that was my negative 4 as well, and it starts there, and it goes up forever, so it also goes to infinity with a parenthesis. I didn't finish this top problem up here. f of x is equal to 4. That tells us that y equal 4, so we have to find out what x is when y equal 4. So y equal 4 is up here, and there's only one point, and that would be 0. x is 0, that's when y is 4. Down here again, f of 0, that means that x is 0, so we have to find y. And when we have 0 here on the x, we also have 0 for the y, and there's only 1. And then f of x equal 4, that tells us that y equal 4, and x is equal to, when we come over here to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we go up to our graph, it looks like it's also 4. So it would be 
4 there. So now we want to just look at function notation and evaluate. Remember that that means that this negative 6 is actually x. So wherever I see x, I'll replace it with negative 6. So I've got x squared, so it's negative 6 squared, and then plus 2 times that negative 6. So negative 6 squared is going to be 36, and 2 times negative 6 is going to be negative 12, and 36 minus 12 will give us 24. Now let's try it with 1 half. Doing the same thing, 1 half being squared, plus 2 times 1 half. Well, 1 half squared is 1 fourth, or 0.25, plus 2 times 1 half would be 1. So we actually end up with 1.25. I don't care if you use the fraction or the decimal. That was a nice decimal, so I went ahead and just used the 0.25. Now let's keep going, but we're not using numbers this time, but we don't do anything different. Whatever's inside the parentheses goes in for the x's. So we've got c, and we've got to square that, plus 2 times c, and that's really all you can do. c squared plus 2c, if you'd rather. I'd take either one. One more. So now we have c plus 1 quantity squared plus 2 times c plus 1 plus 1 squared, remember the shortcut, it's the first term squared, plus twice the product, so c times 1 would be c times 2 would be 2c, and then square the last, so 1 squared would be 1, and then if I distribute here, I get 2c plus 2, and then just simplify, c squared, 2c plus 2c is going to be plus 4c, and 1 plus 2 will be plus 3. All right, so now we have to talk about domain of a function when it's written in function notation. So how do we do that? Well, first thing you need to do is think about what do we know about square roots? We know that the square root, this value underneath the square root, then a has to be greater than or equal to 0 or else we don't have a real number. So here we're going to say that 5a minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So 5a is greater than or equal to 2. Remember, adding or subtracting doesn't change the inequality sign. And we're going to divide by a positive 5, so that doesn't change the inequality sign. So we have a is greater than or equal to 2 fifths. Now, if I want to write that in interval notation, which is what it says, it means that this is the smallest value that I can have or anything bigger. So it's greater than or equal to, so that means a bracket. The smallest value is that 2 fifths, and then the largest value is going to be infinity with a parenthesis. Now let's look at this next one. We've got a square root again, so that we know the 5 over x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And we also know that x minus 2, since it's in the bottom of a fraction, the denominator can't be 0, so we know that x cannot be if we let x be 2, that'll give us 0, so x cannot be 2. Only thing that we have to worry about here is what's going to be in our denominator. So we would say that x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0, because that numerator is already positive. It's not going to change signs. So x has got to be greater than or equal to 2, but it can't be equal to 2. So in this case, we would say that x, I forgot to write this last time, is an element of not including 2 up to infinity. We have that t plus 1 got to be greater than or equal to 0. And we know that 3t plus 2 cannot equal 0. Those are the two things that we really have to take into consideration here. So if t plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, then t has got to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay. And if 3t plus 2 can be equal to 3, then 3t can't be equal to negative 2, and t can't be equal to negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds is bigger than negative 1. It's closer to 0. Farther to the right, so we say it starts, can be equal to, so it starts at negative 1, 
and then it will go up to that negative two-thirds, but it can't include it because we're saying it cannot be that. Then we can have anything on the other side of it because that's still greater than negative one. So we have to again parenthesis our negative two-thirds and then go to infinity.